Today, what we're going to do is we're going to sand down both the web frame and the support pieces and get them painted up. Uh, the other thing is while these are drying, we're also going to work on the top of the dresser, both sanding it and prepping it down to its size. And hopefully today we can get the staining in. So with that said, let's get to it. Before you get to any sanding or painting, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to prepare a sample of the oak top and stain it up to the color I want. Now, I'm going to try this stain color and a couple other I have in the shop, and I'm trying to match the furniture that's currently within the room itself. So, with that set, let me mix up the finish and then let's apply it. Now I'm going to take my paper towel, squeeze out the excess, and then wipe in the stain. Now the reason why I want to do this now before I start sanding is I don't want any of the ambient dust to land on this while it's drying. I mean while, while I'm applying it because it could affect the color. So the first coat looks pretty good. I think though, I'm probably going to have to do at least two coats. Let me just put it on the edge here, see how it looks together. It's still pretty light. If I go a little darker, let's see how it looks. I'm going to come back with the clean side of the rag and wipe off the excess so I don't have any blotchy spots. Now, here's the tip of the day, is that I, off camera I, I did sand this before I put the stain on. And the reason why we need to sand and stain within the same day is that when wood is sanded, you're opening up the cells to accept that color. If you just try to put it on a regular piece of wood that's been unsanded or, or not pre-finished, it's just going to look blotchy and yucky. <laughs> yucky. <laughs> so, the rule is, if you, if you intend to stain a project, you need to sand that project the same day and make sure all the dust particles are out of the cell. Oak is really notorious, especially red, for having a lot of free spaces to fill in. So it might be a good idea to either use a pre-stain or to use a, what we call a wash coat, which basically is like a wood putty mixture that you push into the cells of the red oak and then you sand it back and it gives you less space, have it, less space for you to have to fill. Now, I personally like the black street look of oak, so I'm not gonna use a wash coat for this, but that looks pretty good. So with that said, I'm gonna put this outside and away from the sanding where it's about to commence, and let's prep all the parts. brush on the white acrylic and I'm going to put more of an emphasis on the front edge here making sure I get a good thick coat. I'm just going to coat everything once for the interior drawer parts but parts that are facing the outward side are definitely going to get two coats for sure. Um, the only reason why I'm doing this is that I'm kind of low on paint and the budget's not really going to allow me to do more with it. So I'm just going to be very stingy with where I'm putting the paint now just to cover the gray, but not completely seal like the side pieces got. So they got a lot of paint. 
where there's gonna be like a lot of wear and tear and movement. Whereas these parts are gonna be concealed inside the project and the drawers themselves are gonna be on floating runners. So there'll be no contact on the paint itself. So with that said, let's get to it. So one thing I'm going to try, I want to be able to paint both sides at the same time to save myself some work time. So I'm actually going to try using these clamps clamped in opposite directions, kind of like uh, feet to hold this up here. And now I can get both sides of my web frame. And then I can always go back and paint the back end later. But now I could put an emphasis on all the surfaces that might possibly be seen in this project. You may notice that we're back inside. Um, this is a great example of planning for the weather. I got most of the project painted already when we had a good spell of weather. Right now it's raining outside, so I had to do my painting project inside. So the benefit is now all I have to do is these small parts and I don't have to worry about tiptoeing around the shop with a lot of wet parts. So finishing in segments is actually a good way to space out your project, especially when you have a small shop and limited space. So again, plan ahead. waiting for it to dry, I'd like to move forward on the top. Now the downside is there's not much space for me to do it and number two I have wet paint here. So anything that I do that generates dust is going to stick to my project. So what would I do in this situation to do extra work? So continue to do work but not mess up the work I have just done. So in a small shop environment, you really need to you do need to plan ahead and make sure that you're not trying to do work on top of work inside the same space. Unfortunately, I'm limited to this space right now, but there are two things I could do. I could take all this stuff into the basement where it could dry and then possibly continue to do painting, or I could keep this in here and then between the breaks in the rain, go outside and do other work. But I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna take everything down to the basement where it's gonna dry and then I'm gonna clean up the shop here and prepare for more work. So with that said, let's get to work. I'll just set it up the project again, just to see how the top fits. And the obvious thing is it's, it's huge, it's too long. So we need to cut it down. And what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna measure what we have. So we have, what is it? Down the bottom here we got 30, 31 and a half. Cause that's closer to what it's actually going to be. If I measure up here, the sides could tip in and my measurements are off. So I wanted measurements could be off. 
So instead, I'm going to come down the project, and I'm going to measure closer to the bottom, which should be most accurate. So it actually is 3 and 31 and 8, 9, 10, 11, 16. So it's 31 and 11, 16. So we're going to cut to the calculator. So 11 sixteenths is 68.75, so 31.6875 plus, so we're going to add a three-fourths overhang on either side. That would be 1.5, which equals 33.1875. So I take 0 0.1875, hit math, frac, I get 33 and 3 sixteenths. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to round up because that seems kind of a small measurement. So if I were to do 33 and a quarter inch or 33 and 3 eighths, that might just prevent it from being too short. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do 33 and 3 eighths of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the project over to this edge and over here, which I actually really like. and looks really nice on this part. And I need to figure out what that number is. So how far should, should I go from the end to the side of my dresser if I want it to be 33 and 3 eighths? Well, what you do is you take that whole number. So the, what I want is 33 and 3 eighths to this. I know this is 31 and 11 sixteenths. So I take 33 and 3 eighths, subtract 31 and 11 sixteenths. I take that number, divide it in half because I want equal space on either side. And the number I get, so if I just double check, it is 27 30 seconds. So if I go on my combination square, 27 30 seconds would be. So I set it to 27 30 seconds, and that's the distance I'm going to set my my uh, clamps to on the side here. So I know. I know my hand screws are bigger than that measurement, so that's why I'm going to try to take that measurement from the center here on my piece. Now, I did just notice when I was inspecting the board that there's a little bit of snipe here. So instead of trying to match it up now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off any defects I see. So I'm going to cut this snipe off, make this edge perfectly square, and then from that I'm going to measure out 27 and 27 30 seconds from that new end and then on the other side here I'll cut that after I have squared that in so again I'm doing in the six steps of squaring a board I'm doing step five and six because I did at the shop when I was playing this I did the edges and the faces and I didn't do the ends but they were squared when they came out but Besides that, what we're going to do now is we're going to take that time to cut off those defects. So with that said, let's get to work. So what I'm going to do now is I created a track saw setup so that I have a piece of aluminum or aluminum track, set at perfect 90 degrees to the edge of my board. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that track to guide my circular saw to cut off that waste piece that I don't like on my tabletop here. So that's how we set up a track saw. Now, I'm using a sheetrock square, which I'm going to show uh, when I'm setting up the opposite side. But right now I actually have it clamped in with the track so that if I actually bump the edge of this, it's not going to come out as square. 
So with that said, let's make some chips. So now that I've squared the other end, the squared one end, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to cut it to final length. And what I want to do is I just want to make sure, and that's why I have it mocked up. So I have two pieces that are the same thickness as my drawer, my dresser sides, plus a shelf. And I set that side over there to 27 and 27 30 seconds. And then I measured over here to 27 30 seconds. Now, this is the last step and the most crucial step. So I think taking what's really important is you really need to take your time during this step. If I cut this short, I have to start again. So it does make sense to slow down, pause, maybe go take a break, come back to the piece and take a look at it and see if it fits. What I don't like is that the original line of 33 and 3 eighths seemed really close to the workpiece. Um, my front edge is pretty shallow, I don't like it so much, but this is 3 eighths from the front, and then I got 27, 30 seconds on the side. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to take a step back, and I'm going to look at it until I feel like I got the right size. Because again, I don't want it to be really long on the sides and super short in the front, but I don't want it super short on the sides just to match the front. So, pause, and then we're going to come back and recut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my portable router, and I'm going to cut a chamfer or a 45 degree angle on the bottom edge of the dresser top. And I think that'll just create a nice design for it. And then on the top, what I'll do is I'll just gently round the corner so there's no sharp edges in the baby's room. So what I decided to do was, instead of setting the router and then going to cut it on the actual workpiece, I'm gonna do a test cut on the same material but it's the cutoff, so the waste piece, so that I can test different heights and see which one I like the most. So with that said, let's get to work. So I like that height for the dresser, and again, I'm gonna do this design on the bottom of the dresser itself. And I think it just creates a nice aesthetic I'll soften the top with sandpaper when we get back to sanding, but right now I've identified this is going to be my bottom side and the other side will be my top. So I'll cut in the, the chamfer on three sides, not four, three. So this is going to be butted against the wall. So one, two, three. Then I'm going to sand this down up to 220 grit and then I'm going to stain it today and put it aside to dry for 24 hours. Again, with stain, it takes 24 hours for full cure. You can't put finish over top stain before that time, and you need to sand it before you actually put any type of top coat or penetrating finish because it'll just look really bad. So for the sake of quality, you need to slow down your process. All right? You need to take the wait time and follow the steps exactly, because if you rush it, you'll waste a perfectly good project and make it look, well, terrible. So I'm going to finish cutting in my chamfer, sand up the project, and stain it. And that's where we'll end for today. So let's get to it.
So actually, I'm going to have to stop for today because I just noticed that there is a crack on both sides of this front board. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make my own wood putty to fill in the crack. So staining this is out of the question today. So what's going to happen next time is we're going to show the how to make your own putty using the sawdust from sanding. And then we're going to fill that gap in on both sides, sand it, let it dry, and then stain it. When it comes to the rest of the dresser, we're going to keep painting the other parts. So the three center dividers were not painted today. Uh, it does look like I'm going to need them for the dresser itself. So I'm actually going to, off camera, I'm going to sand those, paint them up, get them all prepped, so that when we go to construct this, which is something I have not covered yet, I plan to build this dresser from the top down. So let me just back up for a second. So what that means is this entire top is going to be stained and finished all coats, all three coats of water-based polyurethane. And then I'm going to take my side pieces screw them in at their correct positions, then put the dividers in, then the web frame, then the shelf, shelf, and shelf. The reason why I'm going to do it that way is it will ensure that going from the top of the project down, everything will be equally spaced, square, and secure. All right, so that's how I plan to put this project together. Once the whole thing is put together, then we can start considering how to construct the drawers for the top three parts. All right, I'm not going to rush that. I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not going to skip to doing the drawers while I'm waiting for this. I'm going to get this entire piece done first. Then the sides, web frame, uh, dividers, web frame, shelf, shelf. And in the middle of that process, I'm also going to do divider, divider, divider. And that should create a strong, rigid project. And then once that's done, I can put this project to the side and start working on the fine-tuned stuff like the drawer itself. Now, what I was thinking about the runners is we have done floating runners before for our intro project. And I want to do it, instead of doing it out of a hardwood, I'd like to do it out of a high-density plastic, like, um, like a cutting board plastic. What's nice about it is it won't expand or contract. So it won't catch my drawer. And number two, it's pretty frictionless. So I can move the drawer in and out without having to worry about it getting stuck or putting an excessive amount of paste wax on it. So with that said, we're going to put a pause on this for today. And I hope everyone's staying safe. And you'll see you guys later. Bye.